All right, so you want to get into mixed media for your music videos, edits, whatever? Let's talk about it. No gatekeeping, just creating. I'm going to be showing you how you make this animation from start to finish using nothing but crayons and paper. There are so many amazing mixed media tutorials out there that can explain things better than I could, but a lot of people have asked me about my process, so I kind of want to show you if I took a random animation, what would my thought process be like from start to finish and show you everything physically. To me, mixed media tutorials are kind of tricky because there are so many methods and techniques out there you can utilize. You shouldn't just want to follow a tutorial and mimic the exact effect. You want to learn the process. So this kind of tutorial is more about the method of mixed media and how you can use it and why you use it and the, the entire process of how I think of stuff. I'll be utilizing Premiere and Photoshop and other things in the Adobe Suite, but you can do this in anything you want. You can do this in CapCut, you can do this in iMovie, you can do whatever. Like I'm gonna show you my process, but the, the whole goal of it is to show you the process so you understand the tools needed to then go out and do it yourself. So let's begin. All right, well, welcome to the project file. We are here, this is a nature versus nurture. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of, well, we're gonna be doing this effect, but I'm gonna be showing you how I kind of selected it. To be honest, the kind of selection process for a lot of these things is kind of very random. Like, I'll have moments where for the video, like I know, okay, I have this idea with the specific lyric, I wanna do this transition, I wanna do this effect. Other times it's about filling space. Like if I'm just making the edit, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of dead right here. Um, I'm gonna find a way to spice it up. So here it is, it's, it's a green screen clip. Um, I don't really know much. It's a green screen clip. Um, that I added some saturation and I think I played with Lumetri colors on the actual clip as well added some like uh, This is just like a shape layer that's moving around and some text um, But I know okay. Well, he's making some pretty cool hand motions. It'd be kind of cool effect um, Let me do something with that. So And all those zooms are practical. So I have the idea of this. All right, let's print it out It's kind of like tracing around him and let's add some um, some effects like like the, the lyrics are um, something something gold and I wanted the gold so I, I if you watch the actual thing you can see really quickly around here um, gold soul you know it says it over there so I know I wanted that I didn't really know how I was gonna look but I know I wanted that effect so so let's say you have your clip now that you want to do mixed media to now the question is what frame rate do you choose um, for me I kind of hop around between anywhere between 8 FPS to 12 FPS that's kind of sweet spot higher is gonna be smoother obviously right um, usually you work in 24 frames, so you know 12 is half. Uh, typically, I like to work in like 10 is kind of my sweet spot, which isn't ideal because it's not a perfect ratio to transfer over. It's not like two frames, you know, whatever. But it kind of looks the best in my in my opinion. Uh, I do go eight, eight FPS when I'm lazy and I don't want to do as many frames, or I'll even do lower than that if I really if I really am lazy. But 10 is a sweet spot I found. So we're going to be doing 10 actually. For the sake of this example, I'll just do eight so it's less frames to show you guys, but it's all the same process. It's just maybe a few extra frames or whatever it is. You could, if you wanted to, throw on some posterized time on the on the clip that you want uh, to kind of play around with seeing how it would look at a certain frame rates. Um, forgive my horrible arrangement here. This is not normally what my workspace looks like. So here's it at 12 FPS. Let's go to just the file. Right, kind of laggy, it's part of the point, right? So let's go to eight. A little more laggy too. So let's just, we're gonna stick with eight just so we have it. So now we got the clip that we want. We're gonna hop into our export settings. Ignore this, this is because it's an old project file. You're gonna create, you know, a folder wherever you want it. Put put it somewhere, ideally in a folder because it's gonna be a series of images so it's easier to, to find um, anywhere it works though. We're gonna go into PNG under format. Um, and make sure this is this should be checked by default, but you're gonna make sure the export sequence is checked. Um, that just allows it to all be in sequence, so when you upload it somewhere, it's easier to, to read it. Um, but here's where you want to change. Normally, this is checked by default. We want to make sure it's just the frame that you want. So 10 is the, or 8 is the one that we're gonna go with for the sequence tutorial. Normally, I would do 10, right? Just more frames. Everything else you can render maximum depth if you want. Doesn't really matter for our sake. Um, and then that's it. So then you hit export. And it should go pretty fast, depends on what it is. If there's effects on it like this one, it might take a few more extra seconds, but there we go. And then from here, we're gonna go into Photoshop to select our frames. Now we are in Photoshop, and this is kind of one of those things I was talking before where there's a million ways to do this. Um, this is my method. Um, and yeah, I, I believe, so I'm on Mac, but I believe there's a way 
on PC if you just like select all your frames. So here's the fra frames that we exported, right? One is vertical for some reason, or I just flipped it, um, whatever. Uh, you know, if you just like drag, if you just select them all and like hit like print or something, then it can actually format them uh, for you automatically to print, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't have that though, so this is the way I kind of do it. We're gonna be using our free frame guides that we have on our store. Um, it's in, there'll be in the description. Uh, we have one for 4K and one for 1080p. Um, if, if you work in 1080p, um, it's kind of good because then you could, you know, it's gonna fit exactly to the frame and then when you go back in to put them in, uh, they'll be scaled properly. It doesn't really matter. If whatever footage you're working with different ratios or whatever doesn't fit properly, that's okay. The idea is just that it's, it's, there's a certain amount of frames per page um, and the same size um, to make it easy for yourself on the edit as well as just for drawing. So we have this in, it's a simple, you can drag and drop is on standard letter, paper, whatever, whatever the standard paper is. Um, I, don't, I don't know the sizing right now. But yeah, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our first frame and uh, we're gonna select and kind of make sure it can fit this box as much as we can, right? And make sure whatever you're using, whether it be Photoshop or whatever, it's not, it's scaling properly like it's not uh scaling evenly where it's gonna mess up the actual width of it it's gonna be even uh for this example i'm not actually using a typical resolution that i would so it's not gonna fit perfectly but that's okay well, what, we, what we want really is just that it fits that it fits generally and every single frame that we do after this is gonna is gonna fit is gonna be the same size uh normally i work in 1080p so it would fit perfectly but for the sake of this tutorial I'm, I'm not gonna reset the entire sequence i'm just gonna keep it as this so we have that, cool. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go through the process and just basically keep on putting them down and resize them to be whatever it is, right? And make sure you're hitting in each one and drag and drop and drag and drop. And you're gonna repeat this process until the whole entire page is full and ready to go. And once that is, we're gonna hop over to printing. Uh, this, this is probably the most tedious part of it, of time consuming part of it if you're doing a lot of frames. Looks like we have about 20 of these, so it'll be under two pages. Um, but yeah, and I'll do it more gracefully normally, but it's fine. Again, a million ways to do this. There probably is a way to do it on a Mac where you automatically sort these images and equal them out. Um, that's cool too. Our frames are just there to help you. Uh, what's nice, I think I think I already said this, but what's nice is that if you use 1080p version of the of the frame guides, then it'll perfectly fit the size of your of your um, of your sequence when you put it back in if you're scanning at a certain DPI. Um, but yeah, so you're just gonna follow through this. I'm gonna skip ahead to show you what it's like when we're ready to print. All right, so we have everything laid out and ready to print. Um, I'm actually only gonna be doing one page for this like, tutorial to save paper because it's gonna show you the process regardless. But what I would do if I have multiple uh, pages I need to fill, for example, I think we had like 20 frames, 20, 21, this was an extra one, happens sometimes. Uh, 21 frames what I would do in Photoshop is oops I would um, Select all the frames that I have and then I'll make it a folder and hide the folder So then it's back to normal and then I'll print that rinse and repeat whatever it's good to have that in a folder that way I can always go back um, And find more like these are old older scans uh, If I ever need to go back and do something again, it's really laid out for me pretty nice. I would name it I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna do that but so we're gonna go to our print settings uh, file print. I guess I don't think it's in the screen right now, but you should know where that is if you're doing this. And this will open up this print settings. And so here's the thing where it's it's going to depend really. Uh, it's going to vary really depending on your printer and that kind of stuff. I have my printer linked in the bio. I really recommend uh, the printer that I have, the Canon one, because uh, it uses I, I believe it's like pigment dye or something where you have to pour in the dye instead of actually just using cartridges. And because of that, you save so much ink. I've been doing stuff, I've been printing for eight months, probably hundreds of pages by now, and I'm not even halfway f uh, empty of uh, the starter ink, which is pretty crazy for the amount of stuff and quality that I print. So I recommend it, but there's a million other uh, printers that have the same sort of kind of ink style. I recommend those as well. This is a good printer because the quality is good for pictures, the scan quality is great. I highly recommend it. Again, the link in the bio is on our Amazon storefront. If you buy it there, it helps us. Uh, it helps us by getting a little bit of commission, but you can find it elsewhere. And also there's a million other printers. Do your research. But point being, this part will be a little different, but I'll show you the kind of settings that I would normally do. So we go to print and you know, here's my printer. 
um, and we go to media and quality, uh, make sure that, you know, the tray, whatever, that's depending on your paper or whatever, the quality, make sure it's best. That's really important. Uh, even though we are kind of going for the grungy style, uh, for stuff like this quality, you want to make sure it's it's the best quality. Um, another thing to talk about is paper. Paper is something you can play around with. You don't you don't just you don't have to just use normal printer paper. What I'd recommend actually is I used to use uh, bamboo paper. It has like a slight brown hue to it, but it's a better texture. It's kind of I'll show you when we go in the actual uh, um, drawing part of it. I'll show you the kind of textured if I can. But it's just thicker. It's thicker, which means it's easier to draw on. Uh, you can use more materials. You can you can, you, you can use you know crayons and stuff without it smudging too much. Just a nicer material to draw on. On top of that, it's a better material uh, for imperfections and it's cooler texture. It just adds a little something different. Um, neural, neural printer paper is totally fine, but I would recommend other kind of paper. Play around with it. Uh, that bamboo paper I use now is actually sold out on Amazon, which sucks, and it might not be restocking. So I've been playing around with this new watercolor paper. I'll link that as well. But just try something else. It, it, it all it, There's a lot of cool things you can do with texture. Um, and yeah, but then you have everything ready. You know, if, if it's kind of paper, maybe you change that, uh, but that's really generally what it is. And then you hit print. So we're gonna print this out. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the desk. Okay, welcome. We're here at the desk now, that's where the magic happens. Um, before we dive, I'm just gonna show you the general tools that I would use. Um, one, this kind of nice sheet is good for cutting on and drawing on. Add some thickness to the desk. Help protect your beautiful mouse pad. Recommend a Lincoln bottle for that. Next, you'll need an X-Acto tool. Allow you to cut and draw on stuff, or don't drop, uh, scrape up stuff. Highly recommend. I have a plethora of markers and pencils in this cool Game Boy mug, the Colter. What we are gonna be using though is this. Massive collection of crayons. <laughs> That's just like a clusterfuck on the fleet. Uh, recommend 96, you know, run out. My hands are big, as you can see, I run through these like nothing, and I break them. But that's kind of the essential tools that you need. So I'm gonna walk you through like kind of creatively like what I would do, how would I, I would approach this if I know this is a moment of this video, I wanna make cool, what do I do? Um, like I said before, there's moments where I know like generally I want a certain aesthetic, I want a certain thing, and there are moments when I have no idea, I'm just filling space. But this moment in particular, I knew I wanted something cool. I love his movements, they're very cool. I know like when the sun had a lot of energy. So I knew that I wanted to do two things. I wanted to scrape this all up, make it look kind of more grungy, more rock, more, how do I say rock, but just more grungy. And I wanted to implement the lyrics at a certain, kind of, at a certain point of it because there's a moment where he goes, uh, I summoning my soul, gold, and I know those soul and gold I wanted to implement. So. What I would do is that if there's a certain moment animation drawing that I want to have in the frame, um, I will start there. So let's just say, I didn't print all the frames again, right? But let's say this frame right here, I went back in my footage and the moment he says gold is right here. And I want this to be, it's a main moment where it says gold. I know that for sure. What I would do is say, you know, there's a thing like, I, I want the layer to say gold, right? So I'll start there. I'll draw out gold. Okay, so I have that, not perfect, right? But it says gold, kind of. I have that. Now, I would kind of work backwards in frames to make that gold appear. That's kind of how I like to do things. So for example, I would kind of figure the timing generally, but I would start, say I would start here. This is where the first, this is where the G appears. So I would go there and spell out gold letter by letter to make it appear. It's kind of a nicer effect than it just being there. Especially for it just being there for one frame. If it's there for one frame, it's that's a stylistic choice, but it, no one's gonna tell. Even this, no one's really gonna tell. It's pretty fast. Um, but that's kind of how I would do that. And with the exact you can do a lot of cool things, right? You can cut things, it's, you know, you know, cut things out. Um, if you were, if you hear from those TikToks that I posted before, the ones that, that, that went semi-viral, the, um, the cutout ones, uh, what I did essentially was I would print the frames out just like this. I actually bring them pretty smaller. Um, and I would just trace and cut them out. And then I would cut them out and put them on a piece of paper like this. Um, and I would number them so I know, but I would just cut them out. And that's essentially what I did. It took forever, but that's what you would do. 
Um, that's why I said that they're pretty simple. It's the same process as you before you print them, cut them out, scan the back end, it's easy. Um, but yeah, I would do that. That took me forever. Also for reference, this is normal printer paper. See if you, if you hear how flimsy it is. Like it's fine, it's cool. But first this. It doesn't it doesn't fold us and bend as easily. This is a watercolor paper I was talking about. So you can actually put watercolor on this, put all sorts of pastels and stuff, and it's gonna be great. Highly recommend. We got that out of the way, just showing this kind of process. I'll show, I'll show you other stuff that I do. Um, so the actual tool. You can cut things out, but you can also screw things up. What I did for this one especially, I was talking about I want to make it grungy. This is kind of something I always do in my animations. The first thing I do is kind of scrape it up. So I kind of follow through this and I scraped it up. And what's cool about this paper is thicker. It gives you a nice texture to kind of scrape off of. So you see how it's kind of like, it's kind of rough, right? And that's cool. So I would follow that process and just kind of go through all of these. Scrape them up, maybe let them look cooler. Follow the subject. It's a traditional thing to kind of trace the subject around. I like to do that. Makes it look kind of grungy, makes it look kind of very handmade, right? And I'll go through that. And just add some good shifting textures for, for when things aren't um, too crazy. It's gonna look different each frame. It's a really cool effect. Another thing I would implement or have in this, in this edit is crayons, right? So I think it's pretty important to, if you know color theory and stuff like that, you understand what colors go well together, what, color, what colors don't. Start there, it's how you, it's how you kind of know, especially when these kind of things, when these kind of things are so time consuming, you don't just want to do something you don't, you're not confident it's going to look cool. Um, but again, a lot of my process is just not knowing what I'm going to do and just trying stuff out. Um, there's a lot of times when I just literally stay on, or just, I just think of one thing I want to do and I, and I go there, I start there and I work my way backwards. Like me here, for example. Another thing, cool thing I did in the effect, in this, in this animation in particular, was I kind of outlined in a crayon. Um, so much like what I do here, where the gold kind of came above, or came to, came to be, right? Starts with the G, goes O, L, D, whatever. Um, if I want him outlined in yellow, right? So like this. It's pretty cool. I would do the same thing with the goal where I kind of did it piece by piece. So around here, I would start like, say here, it's a little bit of yellow and then more yellow, and then even more yellow. So it kind of climbs to surround him, right? Piece by piece. And I, I wouldn't do like normally, unless it's, it's a particular thing, I wouldn't normally do these two things rising at once. I'm gonna draw this out better so you can see it. Right, if I had the gold becoming a thing and also the yellow, I wouldn't do it at the same time. I'm just doing that because I don't have enough frames, but it, it, things like that kind of help them make it feel alive and have progression to the animation. Because if you just have too much random stuff, it's just gonna feel random and even watch you, you're not gonna understand the progression of where it's gonna go. Um, and that can be cool. I know there's that one Justin Bieber Felix video where it's kind of all those individual frames. That's cool too. Not what we're trying to achieve here though. So yeah, so I mean, I can show you the whole entire process, but really it's just, this is what it is. It's right, it's finding something you think is cool, starting one place, kind of working backwards usually. Um, and there's a few more things I'll show you once we scan that I kind of add even more texture. But these things like, like you see how I kind of missed the yellow there a little bit. Um, the scrapes are kind of uneven. That's the kind of texture and imperfections that I love about handmade stuff. That's what you can't replicate in, in Photoshop. Yes, you can miss it slightly, but I, I didn't mean to miss it slightly. I just, cause it was kind of rough going about it. And I think what kind of adds a lot of texture to or, or not texture, but it just adds stuff is when you're tracing someone, don't just like perfectly go against the line, like go so perfectly. If that's, I guess if that's your style, go ahead. I like to kind of have strokes. In the same way you would like, you know, you know, if you're hand drawing, animating something, you're 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 going with the flow of a stroke and stuff like that. That that I think is pretty cool, um, and adds a lot. But I'm gonna do the rest of this so you can see it. I'm just gonna add the scrapes, finish the gold stuff, add the yellow, and you'll see what we're talking about here. Okay, so we're back on our computer. We've opened up the printing and scanning app. 
Um, we have everything ready. One thing I think is really cool that I think adds even more why you should scan and something that I do that I don't see any people talking about is the actual scanning bed, like where you lay the piece of paper. I haven't cleaned it ever. And that's normally not an issue, but because we use so much crayons and little pieces of stuff like that, uh, there's a lot of junk on it. Uh, you can kind of see like around here, see these like red marks and the yellow one too right there. I never added that in. Like that, that that's just like, that's just pieces of actual crayon left over and smudged on the actual skinny bed. And normally you clean that, you should clean it, but I'm lazy and I don't. And the reason why I don't is it adds so much texture. I'm gonna show you that when we scan it in, but for right now, I'm gonna show you the settings first. Um, so again, 600 DPI or above is what I found is best. Especially if working in 4K footage, that kind of stuff. 1200 is even better, but again, for scanning quality and for time sake, I don't do that. 600 is what I recommend. All these settings, keep it as it is, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, scan to your documents. I do PNG, typically a better better compression size or better quality for compression. Image correction, um, it's gonna dole colors out because we're scanning it back in. I keep it as none and I add it back in in post. But yeah, so here you go, you got everything, you're ready to scan and you hit scan. Okay, so now we have our scanned image and back to what I was saying about the crayon dust. Like, look at this. See these, these little red, yellow marks, this one, this one's huge. That's again, just on a scanner bed. It's from months of me just scanning things over and over again with different crayons and never cleaning it. Um, and it's really cool. I wouldn't do it forever, but it's definitely like, it's definitely adding so much. And a big thing about animation like this is the movement, right? We want each frame to feel alive and different from each other. That's why I kind of tell you to do the scrapes I mean, perfectively and just kind of do it like seemingly at random because it helps it helps things feel alive. And these specs definitely add so much movement, so much depth too. And it looks really cool against for this shot uh, for the black background. It makes it feel like there's like particles in the atmosphere, right? And that's really cool. Um, normally I wouldn't, you know, normally you, you wouldn't really even see it, but I always do because I think it adds a lot. I eventually will clean it because like the smudge is coming in kind of big, but it's really cool effects. Something you don't think about. And I recommend you try it out. It's really cool. Okay, so now we are back in Premiere. I've dragged in our scan. I'm putting in project file first, obviously. Um, and I put it back in. I put it here at three frames, um, which is, you know, we're working eight, eight frames a second. If you're doing 10, just do it two. I'll show you what, what that would be like. Um, and here, again, this is what I was saying. If, if we were in a 1080p timeline and we use the 1080p frame guide, then this thing would be perfectly scaled already. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the first frame, right? And find a scale that works for us. Okay, so now we have the first frame already. So what we do now is we duplicate it, holding down option, and just go down the line. What I like to do sometimes is that like, I'll have the first one, it's kind of easy to know now because the first one is a first one, but when you're doing a lot of animations, a lot of rows, you can get kind of easily confused which row you're at and when to move. So what I like to do is, let's go to the last frame right here. And then we have four. Come on, come up. Take the first one drag that over, make it like on a different row or something where it's easily, easily noticeable. And you just go to the right. And now instead of taking the one you just duplicated and going back and around, you know, it's easy. Um, and yeah, you rinse and repeat this process. I'm just gonna fast forward it right now to show you. Um, this is honestly, this is another moment too where it's like there might be a better way. You could splice up um, the images beforehand, which I've seen people do. The reason why I don't do that is that I kind of like um, having the whole scan. It's pretty cool. I've used it before for certain things. You can add a lot of effects like that. Like in the one I've shown before on TikTok where you can kind of see it fall fall away behind the person, the subject. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we have it all ready in place. And again, I only did the first page of frames. I didn't do all of it. And again, I did eight instead of 12, uh, 10, which I typically would do. But let's say we did have 10, right? If you had 10 frames, obviously if we're working 24, it's not evenly, you can't just do two or three frames you know, at a time. It's gonna be, there's gonna be some math involved. So what I would do is say, say we were doing 10 FPS and this whole thing wasn't, wasn't equal. What I would then do is put it all in a sequence, nest, or sorry, nest it, nest a sequence, and say, say my in and out points right here were the exact full, um, 
clip, right? I would hit R for time stretch tool and I would make it just fit, you know, whatever it is. And if you're working in 10 and if all those frames are evenly distributed, whether they be two, three, whatever it is, as long as they're all the same exact length, it's going to fit perfectly to, to, your, to your size and it's going to make it 10 FPS. That's what I would do. So a few last touches, um, you could add some Lumetri color, throw that in there and just up the contrast a bit, maybe up, um, maybe up the saturation stuff like that. Just kind of bring back the lost, lost kind of details, make the color kind of pop. And boom, there we go. Again, only eight frames a second, much more laggier than what we'd want it and shorter than we'd want as well. But that's how you achieve the effect. You see how the gold kind of comes into place. You can see it now, it gets slower. It comes in, same with the yellow, and all these little textures and all these all these little crayon dust. Like that's what that's what we're going after here. And that's it, guys. You're your first animation completed. You're now a mixed media master. Um, hopefully, you guys found some use in this tutorial. Um, again, I think this tutorials can, can is kind of broad because I think it's more important to see the process uh, because this effect, if you know the tools, can be something you can apply to anything. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments below or DM us on Instagram. We're always there to troubleshoot things. If you followed along in major eye animation, please send us something. We'd love to see it, repost it, whatever it be. If you guys like to see more tutorials, feel free to leave some subjects below and we'll get on it. And guys, remember, stay down.